Hello, friends. How you doing out there? Thank you for joining me for another Sunday live stream session with me, Stu Fuchs, and Ukulele Zen. Please say hi in the chat whether you're watching this live or as a replay. We'd love to know where you're at, how you're doing today, where you're hailing from. Today we're going to be learning a fun, funky strum, and I've got a really, really fun lesson for you today. Best uke tips, because as we learn, we're of course going to be learning all kinds of great practice tips and things to help you progress further on your music journey. Great to see that there are some folks in the room from all over the world. Thank you. Maria's in the house from Canada. We got Jack Fraser all the way from San Ramon, California. Linda is in the house from California. We have friends from the UK. David, thank you for joining me. Lisa's here from the UK. How are you doing today? Do you have your ukulele in tune? I am so excited for today's lesson. Now we're going to jump right in, but first I got to tell you for this lesson, you're going to want to have a piece of paper handy. Go grab a piece of paper. I'm just using some old flyer and some notes from an upcoming lesson that I'll be making soon. Get that piece of paper together. You're going to want it for this tutorial. There is a link to this PDF down below. And as usual, I'll be zooming in on my hand and taking you through all the examples very clearly. So you'll be able to follow just fine. But if you want to support this channel, please click the links down below and join as a member of the Patreon community. You may notice that my studio looks a little better. It sounds a lot better. That's thanks to all the generous patrons supporting this channel channel. I've invested a bunch of money in some new gear, some sound improvement on my studio. So many thanks for your generous support. There's all kinds of cool perks waiting for you. So please click the links down below if you'd like to join and support. Memberships are uh, not expensive and they begin at just two bucks a month. Really appreciate you being here either way. Let's get into today's lesson. Now, I want to take you through some funky strumming. This is the goal. We'll be playing a strum something like this. That's about evening time. Down on the corner, out there in the street, Willie and the four boys are playing. Grab a nickel, stomp your feet. Now I'll be taking you through how to get this funky strum in a way that feels light. And um, as we do this, we'll also be answering your questions. So if you have some questions, if you're watching live, put a whole bunch of questions before and after your question. Put some question marks in there so it pops out of the chat. Let's begin by warming up our hands. In order for us to do our work together, we want to first warm up. Let's work with exercise number one. Now this is a subdivision of the beat. We're going to be working from quarter notes to eighth notes to sixteenth notes. The entire time cultivating a very loose wrist. Now let me zoom in on my hand and let me take you through this. Okay, what we're going to do, we'll put on a metronome in a moment. You'll notice that everything is X'd out. That's because you can use any chord with this rhythm. But for starters, let's just muffle the strings. So join me muffling the strings and let's begin by playing quarter notes, then eighth notes, then sixteenth notes. Watch my wrist. I'll demonstrate. One, two, three. Here I go first. One, two, three, four. Then one and two and three and four. Then one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one, two. Three, join in with me. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a rest. Two, let's do it again, then we'll refine it. One, two, a three, four and one and two and three and four and one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a stop. Cool. Let's take a little break here and let's talk a little bit about mechanics. 
hold out your hand right now like you're shaking my hand, okay? I want you to take a look at your wrist and just hold it and make it loose. Let's play a little game here. Let's pretend we're a puppet, okay? Create a marionette string. You're going to hold the string and then just lift up your wrist and let it go. It's kind of playful. Get playful with this. We want the wrist to be loose. Now bring your hand into playing position. And what we're going to be doing is, I recommend for some of these, many of these strums, to be strumming with your index finger. So touch your thumb to your index finger in a place that's comfortable. We're not squeezing tightly, just resting. And we're going to allow only the tip of the finger to graze the strings. Okay, so as we are playing, keep that wrist loose and graze the strings together. This is a motion you've done many times before. We're just bringing a little more mindful attention to it. So let's begin with those quarter notes. One, two, three, four. Let's stop for a second. Really take a moment to feel that your wrist is soft. With me, please. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One more time. Come on. One, two, three, four. One more time. Watch it. One, two, three, four. Now, I understand that this is obviously going slow and on purpose because we want to feel that relaxed feeling and carry it with us as we go into the more fast divisions. So now as we're moving down and up, have the motion generated from the wrist. It's gonna be really important as we go into our funky strums and really any strum pattern that you play. So now we're gonna play eighth notes. One and two and three and four and, and just pause for a second, check in with your hand. Does it feel relaxed? You will really serve your playing well if you look, okay? Really look at your wrist, look at your hand. Let's do it together. Three and four and one and two and three and four and pause. Pausing to check in that we have that relaxed feeling with us. Now that we've connected with that relaxed feeling, let's do two in a row, okay? Two eighth notes in a row. Are you ready? One and two and here we go. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Awesome possum, you are the best. Thank you for being willing to really practice. Let's get into 16th notes. I hope that you are seeing what we are doing is we're cultivating the soft touch and just putting a little bit of space into your practice allows you to really embody, literally embody it, feel it in your body. What is it like to feel relaxed? Looking at it helps you to also take in the information through your optics so you really wire the neurons together. That felt experience, that visual all combines in the brain. Are you enjoying this lesson so far? I'm so glad you're here. Do me a huge favor, reach out, click that like button. It helps YouTube to share my content with other enthusiastic ukulele players like you. So please reach out, click that like button, and let's get into the next part of the lesson. Now, 16th notes. We're gonna be dividing the beat into four parts. It's gonna sound a bit like this. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a stop. It's important that we're only touching with the tip of the finger, the tip of the finger. Try not to strum on the side of the finger. Strum with the middle of the index finger thumbnail. Thank you all for clicking that like button. Keep those likes coming. It really does help a content creator out in a massive way, and it doesn't cost anything. A little click. Thank you so much. Are you ready? Divisions of the beat. One E and a two E and a three E and a four. Let's go. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a take a break. Boom. Woohoo! Hello, Cassie. Glad you're in Rome. Hope you're enjoying yourself. Now, my friends, we're gonna put on a metronome. 
Yes, 88 beats a minute, and we're gonna experience how the beat stays the same. Try to tap your foot to the beat while you are practicing your divisions, and then we're gonna get into more funkiness. Are you ready? One. Oops, that's a little faster. One, E, and a two, E, and a three. 72 beats a minute. One, two, quarter notes. Here we go. One, two, three, four. A one, and two, and three, and sixteenth. Cool, let's do it again. And one, two, three, four, a one, and two, and three, and four, and one, e and a two, e and a three, e and a four, e and a stop. Oh yeah, let's do it again now. One, two, three, four, a one, and two, and three, and four, and a one, e and a two, e and a three, and a four, e and a one. Come on, one more time, let's get it. One, two, three, four, one and two and three and four, one e and a two e and a three and a four e and a stop. Woo hoo, seventy two beats a minute. Now you can practice with different division, uh, different metronome markings. Really awesome warm up. I hope you're seeing the value of what we're doing. If you have one of these rhythm rings on your finger and you start playing sixteenth notes get a little more percussive sound, but we can start to get awesome percussive sound just by bringing attention to accents. So now let's add some accents with example two. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna strum one, then two and, three E and a four and, accenting on beats two and four. What do I mean by an accent? mean that we are moving the finger a little faster. Yes, it's a little harder, but it's more the speed that the finger's moving through the strings. So try this experiment out with me with our, with our uh, strings muted. Just try this out. Go through the strings slowly a few times. Now a little faster. Now really whip the strings. That's an accent. Now let's contrast a slow and then a whip. Here I go. Slow, whip, slow, whip. Okay, let's do this a few times. I'll demonstrate, you copy. Here I go. Slow, whip, slow, whip, slow, whip. Come on, listen to your sound. Can you hear it? Yep few more times. Awesome. So that is cultivating an awareness of the speed of the finger going through the string, which creates the accent. Nan, I got the rhythm ring on uh, Amazon, but you can find them on uh, different, different websites, the rhythm ring. It's a whole bunch of different rhythm rings, little shakers that you can put on your fingers to strum. It's a cool, cool thing. Now, Let's move on to accent pattern number two. We go like this. Let's do this with a little C major chord. One, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four. One more. One, two, and three, and four, and one. All right, cool. So what we're doing here is we're accenting we're practicing rhythms, but now let's make it a bit funkier. First of all, let's move to a C7 chord. So we have a little more of a bluesier sound. And what we're gonna do is after this accent, check it out, I'm gonna go one, I'm gonna ask you to strum and then mute. Strum and then mute. Just use this part of your hand strum, mute, and then come up. So on this beat, beat two, we're just gonna play this beat two here. The motion is strum, mute, up. But it, remember, it's an accent. That's what that little uh, carrot mark is. Strum, mute, up. Now 
Now, that strum and mute, when they're very close together, you get a chuck. That's when they happen exact, almost the same time. To cultivate the chuck, first we strum, mute, strum, mute, strum, mute. Now bring them a little closer together. Strum, mute, strum, mute, strum, mute, strum, mute. A little closer together. Strum, mute, strum, mute. Now right on top of each other. Awesome. Pay attention to your arm. Don't overdo it. If you're starting to feel a little bit of muscle, muscular tension, just relax and take a breath and stretch it out. Let's see about dropping that chuck in on beat two. Sounds like this. Let me demonstrate and then plenty of chances for us to practice together. One, two, and three, and four, and... I'll do it without counting. Alright, you ready? In the moment I'm going to ask you a question you could answer in the chat right now. Let's keep this going. One, two, join in with me. feeling you're sitting at home right now strumming this thing along you can change chords and we're going to in just a moment mark so glad you're here from sunshine coast of british columbia thanks for joining in now let's try this c7 and then let's move to an f7 chord that's just going to be your f with the third finger added for this s7 chord i am leaving the open string there that's what i'm doing so we get this melody on top. Here I go. Get ready to join in and copy. Here I go. Keep going. Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. So we're starting to get funkier. To cover the subject of funk, it would, I mean, it really would take weeks and weeks and weeks because there's so many different stylistic nuances, so many different kinds of grooves that we call funky. But what I'm trying to do here is to give you some, uh, an access point into getting more funky with your strum. Let me know if you have any questions about anything because I want to serve you well with these live stream lessons. So please, in the chat, if you have any questions, watching live, put a bunch of question marks before and after your questions so I can best answer them. I love uh, the fact that you want to spend a little extra time with me. Thank you so much. Please check the links down below if you'd like to join as a member of the Ukulele Zen Patreon community. Many thanks to you all, and if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing to the channel. Many thanks to everyone who has decided to join this community as a subscriber. You helped me to get my silver play button. So grateful. Thank you so much for being here. Now, let's keep on going with this lesson, and what we're going to do is we're going to get into this, adding the thumb, okay? Now... For this, I'm gonna actually switch ukuleles and I'm gonna, I'm gonna use um, a high G string ukulele. That's my pocket theremin, excuse me. That's not my ukulele. This is my ukulele. I forgot to mention at the top that I played a concert last night in Lebanon, New Hampshire, and I had a wonderful time and uh, played with a bunch of loops and electronics. They're not plugged in because they're just, got out of the car, but sometime I'll do a live stream where I'm looping and playing some of my echo-based music. Let's get into, whoops, let's get into this next section, 
adding the thumb. Now, I gotta tell you that this thumb, it really is, should be just one string, okay? So that's my bad, but the thumb, instead of, all, it, it, by looking at this, it looks like you're strumming all the strings, but really what we're doing is we're just plucking one string. Thumb, chuck, up, down, up, down, up, chuck. And later, when we get to the fully fledged strum, we're going to be adding the thumb on beat two. But for now, let's just practice this motion of plucking one string, thumb, chuck, up, three E and a chuck, up. All right. When we get this in the groove, it sounds a bit like this. Let's use our C7 chord. So just a little pluck of the thumb, thumb, chuck, up, down, up, down, up, chuck, up. Now we talked just a moment ago about cultivating that chuck. Remember that as you mute, it's a very light touch. We're not hitting the ukulele, it's very light. So even though it's a powerful sound, the hand still feels very light. Let's try this groove and then we're going to get into the full-fledged funk groove that I want to show you. Let's get into this practicing thumb. Super. All right. There is a question coming in from Kaki. Remember me, me member from Austin. Thank you so much. I'm glad you're here. If you have a question, please, uh, please uh, ask it in the chat. David's got a question. What were those extra chords? Would you like me to show you the extra chords I was playing, the other chord voicings? Okay. We're going to get into this final strum, but let's get into other voicings of chords. These are not notated, so you can watch this video again and jot these down. This is not notated. C7 to F7. And these are different voicings of the chord. Then I moved to my next voicing of C7, which was up here, a little bar chord. And then I decided to play this one. So we have that common tone on top. Okay, we'll get into some other voicings, but first I just want to say that when you're playing this chord, if you begin the strum without this finger, and then hammer on, you get a nice bluesy sound. See what I'm doing there? I'm beginning the strum, and then I hammer on has that effect of all right playing with the minor third and the major third of the chord the next voicing was c7 up here and on a high g or a low g but especially a high g you can just play those three notes or you can include the C right there. Now my finger's at the fifth fret, so I just bar. I bar a shape that looks just like a D7 chord, but it's now an F7 chord because the root note is F. I'm going through these voicings quickly. If you add this finger to that shape, you get a nine chord. So I played this. All right, we'll get into the strum in just a moment. That's the fourth strum that I was just playing for you. Now, the last voicing you could play up here. Now this looks just like the F7 chord that we played here. With the root as F, we would move to F sharp, G, 
G sharp, A, B flat, B, and up here, C. Okay, so that is the uh, ninth, tenth, eighth, and tenth fret. And then I played this. See how the shapes are starting to replicate themselves, okay? All right, same shapes, different locations. So, I hope that answers your question. There are other voicings. You can even play the F7 up there. Looks just like that C right there. Okay, since this uh, was not a lesson on uh, different chord voicings, I did not prepare all that. You know, I'm teaching uh, in an extemporaneous way here. Um, but yeah, check out those other voicings if you want to add some more spice to your playing. And those are all different voicings of C7 and F7. All right, let's keep on moving. Are you enjoying yourself? I appreciate you hanging out with my lessons. Thank you so much for hanging with my videos here on YouTube. Now for the fully fledged strum. Let me play it for you and then I'm gonna break down how to get that elusive flick. So what I'm doing is, in slow motion, flick, thumb, chuck up, down, up, 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 chuck up, down. I'll break it down some more, but here it is played. Let's get into this. First is a flick, flick, thumb, chuck, up, down, and then three ups in a row. Up, 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 then chuck, up, down. Details about the flick are coming, but first let's just practice this. If you can say it as you play, that is a wonderful thing because it helps you to remember it. Make a verbal connection to what you're playing and you'll retain it for longer. So please say it and play it at the same time with me. Flick, thumb, chuck up, down. Up, 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 chuck up, down. That's a lot of information, especially coming through a video, not an in-person lesson. So let me break it down into the first half. Flick, thumb, chuck, up, down. Okay, just that much. Val, yes, these funky strums work with any song in 4-4 time. Yep, they do. It's 4-4, four, four, for sure. Flick, thumb, chuck, up, down. Flick, thumb, chuck, up, down. Flick, thumb, chuck, up, down. One more time. Flick, thumb, chuck, up, down. Cool. Here is a helpful guide for the flick. Do you have your piece of paper handy? Get your piece of paper. This is a flyer from the Omega Retreat. It was supposed to be during 2020. It got canceled, so I have many flyers. <laughs> they make for great scrap paper. And this is a, a really cool strum pattern I'm going to be teaching in a future, a future lesson. And Down on the Corner by Credence Clearwater is going to be a lesson too. But my point is this. Hold up a piece of paper, okay? And open up the pinky. Then open up the ring. Open up the middle. Open up the index. And all we're doing is we're just really opening up the hand in a very light way, grazing this piece of paper. Please don't click away if this feels uncomfortable or unfamiliar. It, there's a good reason for that. Almost all the things we do with our hand use the 
flexors, okay? There are two tendon compartments in our hands, the flexors that close our hands for things like holding a steering wheel, uh, picking up a cup of milk, anything like that. We're using our flexors. Our extensor compartment is not really used consciously so much. Of course, we open up our hand to sh all the time to reach for things, but there's not a lot of activities where we're really flicking our fingers. Well, you tell me in the chat if there are some. You can you know, flick your face. Um, if you're bored in school, maybe you flicked your desk. But right now, what we're doing is we're going to um, bring some attention to the extensor compartment. So begin with the wrist straight, and then just open up the pinky. It's important as we do this to know that I'm not opening up the pinky and forcing it to go any wider than what it's comfortable doing. So just find your natural range of motion near the pinky. And you see how little it comes out? That's all you need. Now open up the ring next. And you see, ooh, the pinky went further. Again, I'm not forcing it. Now open up the middle. And we're just bringing some awareness to the body. And open up the index. And now close them. So we begin with pinky, ring, middle, index. This is from flamenco style. <laughs> So, rasqueado is this type of flamenco playing. Rasqueado, the word means literally to rasp. So we're opening up the fingers. Now, first we did it in the air. Now we do it against something that we're not so invested in, right? The strings, where we want to make them sound good. Now, let's just open them up into a piece of paper. And you can see that the finger just moves through the air. There just happens to be a piece of paper in the way. Good. Cool. So congratulations. You just spent like a minute or so focusing on this, focusing on this. Now let's get it a little faster. We end with the index. And yes, I'm not doing it this way. Begin with the pinky, so you end with the index. So when you're strumming, you end with the index, and you can just keep on strumming. Right. Let's bring it to the strings now. Yes. And again. Joe, I'll get to your question in just a sec. Okay, so we're opening up the fingers. And a key thing here that has helped me is to, you may like to have your thumb resting someplace. For me, it's the top of the neck here. You might like to have it resting here. But have some stability as you open up the hand with this flick, sometimes called the fan stroke, Spanish rasqueado. All right. We're not forcing them out of the hand. They're not being flicked out with any muscular tension. It's just opening them up into the air. Don't overdo it because you might feel some tension back here at the innervation point of your extensor compartment of tendons. All right, so just nice and light. Cool, now try this. You flick, thumb, chuck up, down. And now three ups in a row. Up, 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 and then chuck up, down. All right, flick, thumb, chuck up, down, up, 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 chuck up, down. Sometimes I strum the chuck with these two fingers, okay, those two fingers, and then the mute. Sometimes I strum with this, and then mute. It's really up to you. 
Now let's work this out. Let's work this out. Thank you for joining. Um, the curved lines, Joe, those are ex those are um, ties. So the the rhythm is one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. Okay, so those curved lines, those are ties. That means the sound of this eighth note is being tied into this. It's continuing into that eighth note. Okay, so that's what those lines are, Joe. Trey says she flicks while driving. Yes, do this on the dashboard, on your coat. Thank you for that, <laughs> Trey. It is a great strum pattern. Now we have all the elements. We have our, we've practiced our chuck. We've practiced our fan stroke, our flick. And by the way, you will want to do this a lot. It's not just a one-time practice and we're done. We have to cultivate it until it becomes natural. Just remember the key points. We are not forcing it. It's not flicking off with any tension. And we're not forcing our fingers to go more open than they need to be. It's a very powerful sound, but it really doesn't take a lot of effort to do it. Let's start with our C, and then we're going to move to a G7 chord. Okay. Very slow at first. One and two and three and four. We'll do it with 60 beats a minute, and then we're going to progressively turn up the tempo. I'll start. Three, breaking it down. Flick, thumb, chuck, up, down, up, 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 chuck, up, down. One, two, do it again. Flick, thumb, chuck, up, down, up, 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 chuck, up, down. One, two, working it out. Remember where we started this lesson, the loose wrist, everything fluid. Take some time till these become habits. So that's one, two, three, four. When I tap it out into my metronome, it gives me 50 beats a minute. So we'll start there. One, check it down, up, up. Try saying it. Flick up, chuck up, down, up, 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 chuck up, down, flick, thumb. Chuck up down, up, 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 chuck up down. Thumb, chuck up down. practice everybody. Joe, I hope that your um, hand heals soon. I'm sorry to hear about this. Trey, thank you. I'm glad you're going to use your Vidami pedal to loop this. Yes, good practice stuff. Let's uh, you, Using your Vidami pedal is a great tool. Mine's a little out of reach or I would show it. <laughs> 60 beats a minute. Start with saying it. Flick, thumb, chuck up, down, up, 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 chuck, up, down, or down, up, chuck, up, down, up, 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 chuck, up, down. Cool. We're going to practice some more. Remember that this is a light touch, and we're just exercising then resting exercising then resting one two here we go Try to cultivate a very fluid motion as you do this, 
And remember, it's never a waste of time, never a waste of time to just break down the mechanics with the slow motion. So important for a couple of reasons. One, you get the motions correct. Two, you are uh, learning them and at the same time embodying a relaxed touch. So we want to stay connected to that relaxed touch as we pick up the tempo. All right, friends, we are rounding third base. The lesson is going to wrap up pretty soon. I want to exercise the strum a few more times, and then we're going to apply it to a tune. Let's try this. With 60 beats a minute, let's try changing chords. We'll keep it slow, and then I'll demonstrate it fast. F C G7 C F C G7 So what we've been doing so far is just hanging out on one chord but now the part of the song down down on the corner, out there in the street, Willie and the poor boys are playing, grab a nickel, zombie feet. So, doing it faster there just to demonstrate, the first half is F, then the second half is C, then G7, then C. Okay, we're splitting up the pattern. That means we change chords on this upstroke. I know that it looks like it's um, moving down. That arrow is meant to be an upstroke because you're moving upward through the tablature, okay? Start on your F chord with me. Two, three, four. Flick, thumb, chuck up, down. Up, 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 chuck up, down. G7, thumb, chuck. So, how is this feeling so far? Please let me know in the chat. Are you enjoying yourself so far? We are going to exercise this and then pick up the tempo. So please stick around for that. If you are digging this, please reach out and click that like button. I appreciate you doing that. That does help YouTube to share my content with other enthusiastic music makers like yourself. And if you would like to support this channel, there are links down below and links to the Patreon community where for as little as just two bucks a month, you can support this channel and get some cool membership perks. I offer monthly membership perks for members. There are All the details are at the links down below. Many thanks to you all for joining me. Many thanks to all the generous patrons helping me to improve my studio. Does it sound better? I have all these new uh, sound panels and uh, new lights. I'm so grateful to you all. Thank you for your support. You're helping me to deliver better and better content to you. So thank you so much. Let's keep on going with the last part of the lesson. Check those links down below if you'd like to support this channel, Ukulele Zen. So one more time, this is a tricky thing when we're changing a chord in the middle of a strum pattern, okay? So right there is where we should change. Try to feel it as much as you can. I'll talk it out again. Flick, thumb, chuck. Practice that slowly, and then it just starts to happen faster. Little bit faster. Let's try it. Ninety two beats a minute. Get ready.
Congratulations, everybody. This is a complicated pattern. And although we are breaking it down, sometimes we just got to go for it. It's sometimes it's best just to go for it. Just pick up the tempo and let it flow. Faster. One, two, one, two, here we go. we can put in not only speed sliding into the chords putting that little C7 fill not to mention Not to mention using other voicings of the chords as well. Peter, I will give a tour someday. Um, my camera is attached to my computer, but I will give a tour someday for sure. A little faster now. Keep it loose. Remember uh, the universal law of strumming. As you go faster, you have to play lighter. Okay, so keep it light as you play. Count it out before you play. Say it with me. One, two, say it with me. Flick. Thumb, chuck up, down, up, 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 chuck up, down, flick, thumb, chuck up, down, up, 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 chuck, come on, flick, thumb, chuck up, down, thumb, chuck up, down. but adding some nuance you're awesome everybody thanks for hanging we're gonna pump it up one more time we're gonna really start to crank now bounce thumb here we go down thumb chuck up down up 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 chuck up down flick thumb chuck up down up 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 chuck. here we go set because there's something really cool we got to do take your hands off your instrument come on join me take your hands off your instrument take a deep breath float your hands over your back <laughs> and give yourself a big pat on the back come on you're really working so we celebrate our efforts okay that's what makes us want to show up and makes this chair that the chair that you're sitting in your practice chair into the one of the most comfortable places that you can sit in. All right, so celebrate your efforts. And remember, as you play, it's a wonderful way to work to go from the slow motion to a little faster, a little faster, and see if you can bring that light touch with you. Okay, this channel is called Ukulele Zen, not just for you know, it's not just a name I chose, okay? Bringing meditative presence to our playing and just stopping often, especially in the midst of a practice session that we were just doing. Stopping, 
pausing, feeling the softness of touch helps us to reconnect with that place. Okay. So thank you so much. Haiti, glad you're here. Look forward to talking with you sometime soon. Thank you. So this is the, the strum. All right, from here you can work on picking up the tempo. It is a pretty advanced strum, really, when you're getting into it. But remember the progression. We started with subdividing the beat, making it loose, starting to add some different elements, okay? Return to this video and work with it. And then you have this fully fledged funk strum. There's so many other funky strums we can explore. This is a nice one, okay? And um, it works great on many songs, including uh, Down on the Corner. One last thing I wanna get into, I know many folks may be curious. Okay, I'm starting to get the strum. But how in the world would I ever sing at the same time, right? It is a complicated thing. Let me show you an exercise that I think will help you. As we play the strum, let's just sing long tones, okay? So all I'm going to do now is muffle the strings, play the strum with muffled strings, and begin to sing any pitch, okay? Proving to ourselves that, yep, our hands and our voice can work at the same time. Try it with me. Nice and easy tempo. Flick, thumb, chuck up, down, up, 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 chuck up, down. Flick, thumb, chuck up, down, up. Here we go. Just keep it going as best you can. Like C is the same strum pattern. Yes, you're right about that. Good question. So are you keeping the strum together? Let's do another fun experiment. Just have a conversation while you're strumming. Don't worry if it falls apart or you default to some other strum. But let's just have a conversation. You see, it takes the pressure off of it, right? This motion of my hand starts to become like autopilot, just working by itself in the background while I'm talking. So tell me, folks, are you having a happy October 1st so far? I know you can't answer me in the chat right now because your hands are strumming. I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> happy October 1st. Anybody here celebrating Halloween at the end of the month? <laughs> I got a three and a half year old boy here who can't wait to wear a costume. I got to figure out what I'm going to be for Halloween. Do you like to dress up for Halloween? What's your favorite uh, type of tea? You see what I'm getting at? We just kind of have a conversation while we're strumming. All right, try it. <laughs> it's a fun game to play with your friends, too. Uh, a lot of laughter will, <laughs> will follow. And then, of course, singing long tones. It's much easier to combine strumming and singing when we have long tones expressed, okay? By the way, for those of you who are members of the Ukulele Zen Patreon community, um, every month there is a vocal lesson, a meditative vocal lesson, where I share and lead you through some singing exercises to help open up your voice and, uh, and really have a holistic singing practice. 
It also really will help you to nourish your vocal strength and your tone. Those are available each and every month for members of the community. Andy Rose has a question. I think beat three in the second strum should be a down strum. Let me see. Does my editor need to be fired? Beat three. One, two, check. Oh, yeah. So, Andy, the thing about these is that this is tablature, so the, the arrows up are actually going down through the strings. Down, thumb. That thumb is really just plucking one string. And then the chuck is a downstroke. I know the arrows are opposite direction. That's how tablature notation works. Okay, let me know if that's what you were thinking, Andy, or if there's some other question. Okay, finally, for those of you who are still hanging out, what we can do is we can really crank this up. This is 152 beats a minute. And that's a good target tempo to get to. But if that's too many clicks in your ear, what you can do is you can divide that in half, okay? So instead of 152, you would just set it at half the speed. Thank you very much, Sue. I appreciate your support through a super chat. Thank you all for joining me for this lesson. nuances we can always put into things but right now we have a lot to work with so thank you so much for joining me really appreciate you spending some extra time with your ukulele and i am very honored to be a guide on your music path let's end today by listening to three sounds of the bell to connect us with a meditative listening the same kind of listening that i'm always encouraging students to play with as you're practicing anything. To listen to the sound. It lives on top of silence and then goes back to silence. So listening deeply, coming back to our breathing, coming back to our bodies. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's close with three sounds of the bell. I invite you to please put your feet on the floor and just feel your breath coming in and out and play a little game with yourself. See if you can stay with your in-breath the entire way and your out-breath all the way. Okay, so following your breath in and out, keeping your attention, your consciousness for the full length of your breath. Breathing naturally. Wishing you all the best. Just allowing your breath, receiving it, letting go. Following your breath in and out. Just noticing the sensations in your body as you listen and you breathe.
Thank you for practicing with me. Wishing you and your family many blessings, good health, and happy music making until we meet again. Thank you so much. Happy October!